Z continue to have a discussion on the state of the nation from the lens of the religious institutions. And when we were on break, we were talking about the cost of living in the country. And uh, on uh, the standard newspaper, that is page six of the standard newspaper, church leaders plead over high cost of living uh, and heavy taxation. That is Christians throng various places of worship for Easter Sunday where clerics called on the government to be sensitive about the plight of Kenyans reeling under high cost of living and heavy taxation. Lady and gentlemen, cost of living in this country is a subject that continues to be discussed everywhere. Walk in this country, on the streets, just ask anyone, how are you? Are you uh, better today as compared to last year? And someone will tell you, I am poorer today as compared to last year due to the cost of living, inflation, the taxation that there is. Burali. Yes. The church has spoken. Taxation is heavy on Kenyans pleading with the government to look into that. Is it about time that maybe we were heard? Because when uh, the uh, Finance Act, Finance Bill was, the Kenyans spoke, but it seems like their views were never picked up. I think we should have been heard from ages ago. Mm -hmm. Not even just this government, even before. Salary may not change, but what you could buy for 10,000 with 10,000 last year, you can't buy the same thing with 20,000 this year. But allow me to just take a different angle to this. I once was invited to be a guest of honor at a graduation in one of the, what they would call the high-end schools. And something amazed me when the outgoing head student spoke. I remember clearly what he said. He says, now we are going to institutions of higher learning all over the world. And when we come back, we will create industries and employ people. Mm. We need to go back and change the zeitgeist of the, of, of the country, whereby now a greater percentage of our students are being taught how to be employed and not to employ people. Mm. So when we all go, and there's nothing wrong with being employed, but when you go with that mindset, then it means other factors beyond our control take precedence. But you can imagine today, if I said I want to sit in a meeting where they're discussing the economic downturn or the upward mobility of the economy, and then a Mr. James Mwangi says he wants. In fact, before he says he wants, he will be called. You understand what I'm saying? So we need to get to a place where we train our people to go into places where they will have influence so we stop just talking and do things that will not be ignored. Mm -hmm. And that's where now we are suffering. Why is the church speaking now? And if economic leaders, bank owners had spoken, mm -hmm. what is in page number six would be in page number one. Mm -hmm. Now, because the church has spoken, it's in page number six. six. Apostle Takim said something. He says when he talks to his church members, he says, within yourself, do that which you can do for God. You understand? To the glory of God. As a church also, I believe, and I've seen that with the Catholic Church. Where there's a Catholic Church, there's a school, mm -hmm. and there's a hospital. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So they're doing their bit in that economic power mm -hmm. where they'll be heard. For us on our side, we may not be heard as much because they'll ask us, show us your cards. What have you done before mm -hmm. you say what you're saying? Mm -hmm. But to answer your question, yes, we need to be heard, not by going to the streets, mm -hmm. but by putting forward our representatives who will go and discuss matters for us and not about their belly. Uh, Dr. now here's a question where even the constitution gives Kenyans a right to recall uh, an elected leader if they feel like they are not presenting and representing them as they should. But there's a question where it seems like that power is no longer with Kenyans. Now, as we talk about the cost of living and leaders who passed uh, legislations and acts of parliament that Kenyans opposed and now the cost of living is high, what is your message to the government? Uh, uh, the, the first thing uh, is that uh, when we look, uh, I want to look as a statesman, I see almost 90% of uh, the current MPs going home in 2027. Kenyans are getting smarter. And uh, even as people say that uh, a sitting president is not easy to remove, but currently it might be very easy to remove the current president uh, from the seat because of the stomach. People are hungry, and people, when people are hungry, anger comes in. 
when people are hungry many times they start thinking of why am i hungry and they look at the situation and realize that uh, uh the person whom we put in such a position is the one creating problems to us when you look at uh, the current analysis economic analysis currently we are told that uh, kenyans most of them 60 percent of their salary of their income goes to food 60 percent why go to food because food items have increased tremendously immediately after the election but where is the problem the problem is when you talk to most of these politicians instead of them uh, addressing the matter they blame the other regime they blame those who are there just like many others are doing so we are calling upon the president of this country to go and look where is the problem why are kenyans suffering as far as food is concerned brother uh, you requested me to be here by 6 a.m i left my house by 5 30 a.m and as i passed through the city I saw many people sleeping in the streets. I think uh, since election, since uh, independence, this is uh, the time when many Kenyans are sleeping <coughs> in the streets. And we asked them, why are you in the streets? They say that I've not paid rent for seven months, for one year, for two years. So what we are trying to say is that uh, uh, I think uh, when we look at, uh, I'll just go back to uh, President uh, Uhuru Mwegai Kenyatta. I remember uh, there are several times you could see him in town uh, and uh, I'm saying this, I know it's a security matter, but uh, he could sometimes even drive into town at midnight sometimes to see what's happening. There is a time actually one policeman was so shocked because he stopped a pro box somewhere. And when uh, he was looking at who is driving the pro box, he saw the president of the nation. Actually, he nearly urinated on his <laughs> uniform because he never thought of the president driving himself. Mm -hmm. But what was, why was the president doing that? We realized that there was a time he was seen in Majengo at night. There was a time he was seen at uh, Huruma, where there was a hospital yes. being uh, mm -hmm. there. Was a, we could see him. Why, why was he doing that? <coughs> he was doing it to feel this problem of Kenyans, because he could ask Kenyans, why are you in streets many times? And they could tell him, President, we are here because of cost of Ugali. Then he could go and call the Minister of Finance and tell him, please reduce the cost of Ugali. So we are calling upon President William Somoy Ruto. One of the things we Kenyans are requesting is that uh, please reduce uh, these uh, international uh, international uh, travels if possible. Not for you only, but also for the cabinet secretaries, for the MPs and the rest. Then come and talk to Kenyans themselves. Ask them, when you go to Meru and people actually come with chaos in your, in, your, in your meeting. When you go to Embu, people come with chaos in your meeting. When you go to Kisuma and other areas, don't, don't threaten these Kenyans. Ask them, what is your problem? And let the person actually who is holding your mic, give the mic to that person, just like uh, uh, pre the Tanzanian president is doing, as we have seen. We have seen many presidents doing the same. Asking the person, these people who are coming up to the chaos, please tell us what is the problem, so that you understand the problem from those people. They cannot b b come up with chaos in your meeting if they have no issue to be addressed. Address that issue there, don't threaten those youth. Reverend Massey, cost of living is high. Kenyans are hungry and as a result of hunger they are angry. Now here's a question where there is a tax, the tax regime in this country is said to be high. Um, what should the government do? Uh, because now as we speak we know they are preparing the next tax regime come July we shall be getting a new tax system. What should the government do with regard to addressing the current problems? Um, first of all, let's go back and realize and accept some things. Like, we've been in trouble for a very long time. I remember in 2022, um, we were selling, we were buying unga for 280 shillings a packet. 280. And I know this because I was involved in a, <coughs> in a, a retail where we were selling these things. And we've come down um, to now Onga is 199 shillings. I'm a very <coughs> deliberate person on, on those things because I'm a pastor. So I, and, and I do charity work. So we've come from very, very far. Um, we've come from a place of uh, buying fuel at 245 shillings to now it's how much? 205 or something. So we will look at that and accept that there has been an improvement on some side. But then what has happened is this government has shifted, like they're playing a balance game. So you look like you're bringing down something, but you actually attack somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So in reality, you're not actually bringing down because you're still making me pay in a different way. So um, our former president, 
took fuel levies and took a lot of fuel, you know, whatever, and, and made us pay cheaply. So our current government says that they have taken away those, those, those Subsidy. subsidies. And now that's why we, we had to pay a lot of money on the fuel so that we can be able to come down. And now they say we have come down and we are doing well. But in place of it, they are now taxing things that should not be taxed. As a result, you're not telling us fuel has gone down and you're still demanding another 1,000 shillings from somewhere, some, somebody somewhere. So in reality, it's a mind game we are not getting better because the person taking a matatu this morning is not going to pay anything cheaper than they paid last year when the fuel was 245 shillings but you're still going to collect the tax from them so looking at it from my point of view i'm thinking this government needs to fix the old things before bringing new taxes on the new things trying to you know you're trying to fix the old economy and you're still trying to load the people struggling with that donkey will get tired so they need, before we do the, the housing levy, allow us to deal with our fuel problems, allow us to deal with the food problems, the basic things that we have. Once we've dealt with those, because cost will come down if fuel is truly down, truly down, not this one that we look like it's down, but it's actually not down. Cost of living will come down because transportation will get easier and we can be able to, do, to export and to import things. So in truth, except our government looks at our, people, at our people and thinks of them beyond the mileage they want to cover. Mm -hmm. Because every government is trying to see what legacy will I leave. Mm -hmm. If it's a legacy that is driving a, a government, then what happens is people suffer to make a government look good. Mm -hmm. So we suffer to make a government look good by paying taxes so they can do some things they want to do. The worst thing, Dennis, is that most of that money does not even come back to us. It's going into the pockets of people. So corruption is not getting any better. I was listening to Bishop Obonyo the other day as he was giving his report, and he's saying corruption will kill us soon. Now, if you tell us corruption will kill us soon, and he's our, 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 our yes, chairman, yes, yes. what's our hope? I watched that thing, and I thought, if our ICC chairman says, what's our hope? We are going to die. So at the end of the day is, the money that you're taxing the Kenyans, if you could see true change, we would say, OK, there is good hope. But there's really nothing much happening, but they're taking money. Apostle Takim, cost of living is high. Not only here, even Nigerians are complaining a lot. Nigerians have fuel, but they don't have fuel. You know, cost <laughs> of living is high. high. It is not only here, it's across board. Now, every, every, every time you meet with your, with your congregants and they speak to you, Pastor, what do they tell you with regard to cost of living? Well, the, the same complaint, like, like every other Kenyan and, uh, and all of that stuff. But um, what um, I normally, me, I, I tell people to look at the solution mm -hmm. of the problem because uh, I'm not saying the system has failed. I'm not saying the, the, the system has failed. Though the system globally, Kenya, Nigeria, whatever, is sick. And it's sick because those who are influencing the system. The good thing is you're saying it's sick and in Kenya doctors are... <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, that's such a... <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and those who are at the helms of affairs, they, with, though with good intentions, some of them, the, the, the corruption, like she said, and the mm -hmm. selfishness is not letting this illness to disappear. And, and that is why you see in my first time I was saying, I wish all this government would just restructure that constitution copying the American system of, go of uh, democracy has not really helped us. It's, it's not even helping America itself. Because like in Nigeria, it's four years, Kenya is five years. You come in after the first, like Nigeria, the, the government actually worked for only one year because the first one year you are settling those who campaign mm. for the election, settle them with this position, settle them with this position. The second year you are trying to sit down and say, okay, what do we do? By the third year, you are not thinking, okay, the election is next day. So you don't really work. You get my point? And it's a cycle. And the same thing is happening in Kenya. Though you have five years, but if you look at it technically, the first day a government will come, is looking at how do I settle this person. You look at the appointment, the way they go. You get my point? You don't see a technocrat handling this place, a, a, a technocrat handling this place. You see a politician who worked during the campaign handling this, handling that. So as a result, it's about settlement. So the first year, even to a settlement, because the person you have put there don't want to leave. So you have to do some other things to keep the person there, because you still need the person to campaign for you in the, the next, next one. So if they, if they actually revamp the system and say, no, let's throw this American uh, stuff, this, this democratic system, let's bring our own unique African system, 
Because if you look at it, why nations like Russia are becoming stronger than America, China are becoming stronger? Because they have one person, though through manipulation, he is there forever and ever. So <laughs> kingdom come. Uh, kingdom come. So, so he's pushing his policies and, and pushing things. So if we have in our constitution, we just, we just restructure everything. I say, okay, Kenya, 10 years. No break or seven years. So when you now come, you know you'll be there for seven years. So you are not trying to fight for how do I retain my seat the next day. So that you now work. At least that will reduce corruption and all of that. So you, you, now, you now work. And, and secondly, I, I'm not advocating for the rich to, be, to remain rich. But if you look at it, politicians will already have money. Will already have money and they are contented. They should lead our nations. Because you have the money already, so you, so, so you are not stealing. So when you come, because in, in psychology, once you've made your money, the next thing you're looking for is a name. So you, you get guys who are looking for a name, you get my point, to now lead those nations. They will now do very good things just to leave a legacy for themselves. So if you look at the previous government towards the end, that was what he was looking for. And if you look at it, things were like a bit, uh, that's why I am saying the, the current leaders can just go back and check where were we. And now build from there. And do these uh, changes, the taxation, should be done with human face. Because you, once the nation is broken, you, you have no people to lead, actually. Mm. And again, people should understand, as why leaders, that everybody will give account of himself. Mm. Life is not permanent. One day you will close, your days will be numbered, and you'll be out of this world, and you're going to answer before God how you led the people. Those who died because the doctors down their tools, their blood will speak against you. And all these things, politicians must know that there's life after death. And you will stand before God to give account of that money you took, that policy that you, you promoted that is not helping the people. God is watching. God will judge. And, and this thing yeah. is, very, is very, very important. If they don't know that God is going to judge them, there will be no fear in their heart. There's impunity. There's, there's a lot of impunity everywhere. Like, like, like what uh, the lecturer was, was saying about, uh, um, uh, uh, he, very, you, are, you said you are very sure that some of the guys in government now will not be voted in the next one. Who told you? Because you say you, you don't need to know the people. You need to know the returning officer. Mm. That is all. So, so, so it's not the people. Once yeah, they are in control money. of the system, there's impunity. They know that your vote or, your, or no vote. It does not count. It does not count. Mm -hmm. I'm coming back. So but they have this fear. I think this is what we pastors should do. Because it's so sad that many of us pastors, we go to these leaders, enter their houses, we don't tell them the truth. We just sing their song. Somebody is doing what is bad. You are praying for the person to succeed. Succeed in what? In being a bad person. In being a yeah. bad person. <laughs> Which is very wrong. So you tell the person the truth and say, listen, God is watching you. You're a minister. In that because the Bible called government officials ministers. Mm -hmm. So you're a minister and you are put there by God. You give account. Mm -hmm. God will judge you if you do what is wrong and bless you if you do what is right. Mm -hmm. If you think that whatever you are doing, will not follow you after you die. You are just playing games. Because once you die, your children will reap everything. Mm -hmm. You get my point? Because mm -hmm. there's history. We have people who were up there. OK, for instance, can you trace the children of Adolf Hitler? You can't. Can you trace the children of Stalin? You can't trace them. All, all these guys, they did whatever they did without knowing that this thing will speak <coughs> for their children. And they go away. So if, if we pastors who on their own, maybe religious leaders, who understand the spirit realm, and understand the justice system of God, will tell these leaders that system. At least there will be a measure of the fear of God in their heart. Because if you look at it, it's lack of the fear of God that is responsible for all these things. Mm -hmm. And I come to you, Robert Stump. Here's a question can of... I, can uh, I just uh, maybe say something? Yes. Like um, uh, first of all, the MP is returning. I'm uh, not returning. Uh, that may not be practical because I've gained the returning officer. Number two, people wonder, what's the point? After all, the next one who comes just do this. The, 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 the eight years, ten years that Apostle Takim is talking about, I was looking at the rankings before the end of last year. They were ranking governments, mm -hmm. MPs, you know, there was a whole ranking on how they're performing. If you noticed, the governors who are not going to return were down there. Because the minute someone doesn't have to campaign to return, they stop working, they start eating. Because what have they to lose? Yeah. No, you see, I, what I propose, there will be a system to check this. Okay. You get my, I remember like our president, <coughs> I, will, I, I miss him, I miss that man because when he was our president, 
Nigeria experienced the most prosperous time. We, we paid our, our Paris club debt about, about how many trillion pounds, sorry, dollars. We paid, it was cleared freely. We didn't even pay. The, the, the current uh, uh, president of the World Bank was the Minister of Finance mm -hmm. then. She went and talked to all the members of the Paris Club. And because of the goodwill our president enjoyed, Obas enjoyed, they wiped our debt freely. And Nigeria now shoot up as the leading economy mm. in Africa. Now, what Inan did when he was going, he actually wanted to change our constitution to stop this turnover. But greedy politicians came up and stopped it. He now said, okay, let's bring a development plan for Nigeria for 30 years. So that any leader who comes, follow the plan. You, you don't come with your own agenda. Mm -hmm. You bring the think tank of the, of, of the country guys who have read well read and they sit down come up with a development plan for Kenya. when you bring it we now say okay in seven years you when you come it will be in the constitution you can't change it within your own seven years take kenya from this point to this, this point. point if you are not doing it there'll be a system to impeach you or even arrest you you get my point. If that is done, there will be no problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, these okay. things will be going, uh, uh, and things will be better. But do you know that they also will not do it? Because people mm -hmm. will not benefit from the status quo. Exactly. So, because this one you are saying, <laughs> the guy has, has ruled the first turn or the second turn, yeah. he relaxed. He's relaxed. Because it's a system of next election. Mm -hmm. But if we bring a system of next generation, mm -hmm. The system I'm talking about is next generation, generation. Yeah. not next election. Mm. If we bring a next generation system, all these things we're talking will not happen. Now, Robert, mm. we talk about cost of living. And as we speak right now, the farmers are crying because the fertilizer they bought was fake. And here's a question where uh, one of the things, even as the Sheikh was, was, was speaking, it was the subject of Kenyans are hungry. And for us to be able to feed Kenyans, we need this fertilizer to be able right. to produce more. But here's a question where farmers are not able to produce more because what they bought from government coffers is fake. So then how are we addressing this cost of living? How are we making sure that the government is actually doing justice by the people? Mm -hmm. Because you can't tell me the government did not know that this is fake fertilizer. Because we're not seeing heads roll. In Kenya, choices have no consequences. Mm -hmm. Whoever did that maybe has a political godfather yeah. mm. and knows very well that all these things will be taken through the corridors of justice and it will disappear. Yeah. So we got to get to a place like, because if government really wants to know who did this, within three minutes, they would apprehend those people. Yeah. Then let the public see justice falling heavily on them. A deterrent sentence. Or because you did this, because when you sell this fertilizer that is fake, it means then the crops will not come Food security is uh, compromised. People will not eat. Life and health will be compromised. You understand? Mm. So basically, whoever sold this fake fertilizer should be taken to court for attempted murder mm. because it goes back to food security. You understand? But because somebody has a political godfather, <coughs> and maybe not just a political godfather, if you go deeper, maybe there is a politician who is using people to do this thing and telling them, don't worry, I got you covered. Mm. Until we see that. I think it's Paul Kagame at some point jailed a relative and people sat back and said if he can put a relative to prison who am i not to be put to prison so we must have public uh, display of deterrent sentences that you know what you have been caught you on your own because selling and I, I saw that on tv and my heart broke because this person knew what he was doing when you when you see butchers selling uh, dog meat these are people who have no heart but if government wants to get you let me tell you, you cannot run away from government. Mm -hmm. But you know why some of them are running away from government? Because they are the, the government. government. Yes. Sure. Where was Kenya Bureau of, of Standards, standards. Exactly. at that time? They say they actually went through it. Ah. Where was the county commissioner of that area? Where was the ch area chief? The problem of this country is that uh, people are not ready to own their mistake. Mm. In some countries, we see even an accident occurring in a street. A minister of transport resigns. Mm. We just have a case recently at Utawala where a mother with her four children were crashed on by a trailer. There's no any minister talking about it. There's no anyone resigning. Currently, the matter should be those people who were in office that time at KEBS, all of them should go home, 
are not only home. Kamiti prison should be home to them. Mm. Those in Mombasa should be in uh, Shimolatewa as we speak. And that is when we realize that Kumbe, when you do something like this in Kenya, you'll be punished. You'll be punished. But unfortunately, the, some of our magistrates are waiting for those people to come to be brought to court so that they pocket some money from them. The policemen are also waiting for them so that they can pocket something from them. It is a country of myriad problems as far as corruption is concerned. Mm -hmm. And not only fertilizer, my brother, the milk we are drinking. Some of us are <coughs> drinking paint, which we are calling <laughs> milk. Chaco, we are buying. Some of us are buying stones. With, actually, people are buying many things. Yeah. Oil. People are buying mixed colors. To be told, it is oil. I know of a case of a businessman from Mombasa who actually bought a whole trailer of uh, cooking oil. You know, it's Ramadan, mm. and everyone cooks. So when he was opening them, actually he fainted because all of it was not oil, but very dirty smelling, dirty smelling water. And you look at those cars are highly skilled, and some of them even have cabs approved. Mm -hmm. Cabs, where are you? President, let people who are in cabs that time, you go and look at the code. Let all of them go home and let, let us see them from Tuesday mm -hmm. in the courts and let us see them in committee, Naivasha prison, and Shimolatewa. I will go to okay. preach to them so that they change when they come out. <laughs> Reverend Nasi, there is a question of uh, fake fertilizer. Farmers are crying. They've spent their money. They've lost their money. They don't have produce. Kenyans are crying that they are hungry. We need cost of living to go down. Cost of living will only be determined, first of all, if we have food in surplus that you're able to sell at an affordable rate. But how are we doing that if we are selling fake fertilizers to farmers? You know, I come from a farming background. Literally, I farmed, I farmed most of my young life. And it's pretty sad when a government, because this came from an office that is manned by a government officer. So it is not even, we can't even imagine to think that we don't know who did this. We know, the government knows who has done this thing. But because in Kenya there is impunity, and, and the, the, the corruption is talking about, the, the bribery comes from very far by the time something like this is happening. Because everybody who the, this fertilizer passed through knew this was not fertilizer. These farmers will not be compensated by anybody. And a whole season has gone by like that. We have wasted a whole season because nobody is thinking about the Kenyan. Until our... KACC, that's what we call it, right? Until KACC gets serious with their job and decide, we don't care who you are, we don't care where you come from, we are going to forward your name and we are going to give it to the prosecutor. And let it take, let, let us as Kenyans now see you at the dock and now we decide whether we are interested in hearing what you have to say. We must be given the power to say no to some of these things. Kenyans must rise also. I think the back always stops with Kenyans because these politicians won't help a Kenyan if they are not of goodwill. And so the issue of this fake fertilizer um, grieves my heart in knowing that there's a whole season gone and nobody will do anything about this. And yet you, until now we are saying we don't know who did this. We know who did this. And before we even do cabs, by the time this fertilizer was approved by whoever is in charge of that office, before even cabs went, did they even call cabs? to look at it? Or did they just decide to let it go? F right from the government office that is in charge of this process, we should be seeing a cabinet secretary answering That's about true. this. We should be seeing um, uh, people working below the cabinet secretary. We should be seeing them in court telling us, how is this happening? And not only in court, suspend people from work. Remove someone from their office so that it serves as a president for anybody else that is trying to, to, you know, to do this to Kenyans. I am really grieved at what happens to this nation because our government, right from the president, and I know that we cannot be telling the president to do everything because that's why you have workers below you. But it seems that something is not working in this structure. We hoped for a better government than the ones we've had before. We hoped to see improvement for Kenyans' uh, you know, lives and living. But at this rate, a whole season will go because Kenyans didn't get what they deserved. Mm -hmm. And that, someone should pay for it. Some people should. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, actually, I, I was just listening to these comments, and uh, my mind went back to the things I said, as in 
having a structure, a systematic change completely. Because if you look at it, once the system remains the way it is, you could even bring Angel Gabriel <laughs> to lead Kenya before you know, get the <laughs> So, so because, <laughs> because, there's, <laughs> because there's a way the system corrupts Corrals. the person. Mm. Yep. Because, uh, so, so because me, I have I've interacted a bit within the legal system of Kenya. I've had issues you have to defend members here. Uh, so I've seen the way the system functions. So, so, so if, if um, like, like what uh, uh, the man of God say about um, um, why they can't get this person is because maybe there's a vest interest from a godfather and, and all of that stuff. I think the Bible says something about that. That when you see lower officials taking money, bribes, they are set under higher officials mm. that they will go and give a return to. Mm. Mm. Now the higher officials are sent under other higher officials that they will go and give a return to. You'll be shocked that there's a return system. There is. In these our governments, in the nations, as well in Africa. We are, if I'm going to appoint you to be, like in Nigeria, we call it minister of this minister of agriculture. So if I'm going to appoint to be, you call it CS. If I'm going to call it, if I'm going to put a minister to be a minister of health, so there's a return you must bring to me who suggested your name to the president. You get my point? So once you have that, your first body will be, how do I satisfy my paymasters, my guys who put me here? Then as a result, you will, you will be malfunctioning. In all these things, this, you will just be malfunctioning, sometimes deliberately, because if you do it, you are breaking something. For instance, okay, you, you would be shocked to discover, that. like in Nigeria, why we have a problem with our power system? We have a cartel that sells generators. So mm. they will never <laughs> allow. Like the president of President Obasanjo Obasan <laughs> invested, I think then, 13, I think 13 billion dollars to, to revamp our power system. Everything went down the drain. It only worked for like, is it one month or whatever? Mm. Because the cartel will not let it work. So you will not tell me that there are no cartel living in Kenya in all these little, little things, mm. be it agriculture, be it fertilizer, and, 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 and all of that stuff. Like, it's really sad that that will happen because the leaders they don't have compassion like i said earlier yeah. there's no compassion in their heart and they, it's all about oh how do we make this money and and you see also sorry the the, the danger of not having a government that is continuing like i said development plan for like 30 years let's say kenya bring a development plan for like 50 years mm -hmm. you get some professionals who have been exposed globally. They sit down and cover the plan for Kenya. And say for 50 years, we're taking Kenya from here to here. So any government who comes, you will rule for only for seven days, seven years. No, no election. You go, the next group comes like that. Now you discover that these things will not work. All, all these things that are happening will not happen. Because whoever goes there is going there to serve. You get my point? You know how much it is in the country. This is how much you earn every month. And, and they do it in such a way that you will not be greedy to go and start looking for extra money. And they tighten up every loose end mm -hmm. using policies using uh, some laws and, and and all of that stuff some of these things will not happen like the issue of fertilizer now how can uh, once you have that system it's okay you is in charge of agriculture you get my point so your job when it's produced this system will deliver it so once you have a functioning system it will not destroy the flow of government yeah. you, you get my point because if you look at it it's a systematic problem mm -hmm. it's a systematic problem if, even the president himself he spent money to be elected. Mm -hmm. So they have depleted their accounts. So <laughs> this is a system. If you see, if Africa don't remove this electionary system that is killing us, honestly, we we'll keep right. repeating this kind of talks. And I think that takes me to the next uh, piece of conversation right here. As the church that speaks to Kenyans and, 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 and the mosque that speaks to Kenyans across the country and even in your, in your country as well. Yes. What is the role of religious institutions in helping Kenyans make the right choice? I think uh, uh, the role of religious leaders in making Kenyans uh, make the right choice is taking them back to the book of God, mm. calling upon each and every person to become righteous, making sure that religious leaders are part and parcel of oversight bodies which also actually provides oversight to the government uh, because when you look at uh, matters happening we just remember uh, recently there was a consignment of uh, sugar which is which was termed to be poisonous mm. 
it was told somewhere by the government to be exhibit. But after some time, it was released. Actually, I'm, I'm surprised. That's why I don't take sugar nowadays because <laughs> I think <laughs> what we are actually what <laughs> we are thinking is that one. <laughs> Looking at uh, the 560 bags of semi, uh, of uh, fertilizers, uh, which were says uh, uh, as the report says, which were supposed to go to National Serious and Police uh, Board at Molo, is somewhere actually stored as exhibit. But uh, what I'm calling upon the minister. Uh, uh, internal security and also the president is to make some of us uh, religious leaders live actually near the police stations to make sure that we provide <laughs> oversight and one of us will be staying there actually watching because what will happen is that uh, that fertilizer might soon disappear <laughs> Mr. President and no one will be answerable it will be uh, so what we are trying to do uh, my brother one of the courses I like teaching at the university is a DCC 209 religion and society and we are sensitizing our students to look at religion as science, not anymore as, you, you know, the problem of religion sometimes is that when you are so theological, you always think of praying. You tell a pastor that, uh, you know, I have a problem with my wife, I tell you, let us pray. You know, I don't have school fees, let us pray. No, prayers actually have their own role, but we also have to be wise up there. So the role of our religious leaders is to sensitize our people, is to create awareness in our people and not fear anyone. Because in Islam, we are told, La ta li fi khalik. There is no way you can obey a human being when he's going against the laws of God. And that's why sometimes I speak in media, in television, and everywhere. And people ask me, Dr. Hassan, we know very well that we saw you that day in maybe state house or, but why are you speaking this way? I tell them at this particular time, I'm speaking, as my brother saying, because religious leaders are the ones who are supposed to be leading people towards God's teachings, to be, to be here for the justice of our people and not fear every, anyone. We have seen many religious leaders die. Desmond Tutu, we have seen him. We have seen uh, even in Kenya, Father Kaisa and the rest. They even allowed their lives to go to God, fighting for the rights of people. So it is now... The religious leaders of this country should stand for the rights of people. And I'm calling upon religious leaders because we are planning to come to the, uh, people are coming to the church because of Easter. Don't allow any politician to come and destroy that pulpit. Allow them to speak from outside and tell them the truth when they come to the church today. Mm -hmm. Robert, when we started, you said the church uh, is in bed with the government. Therefore, uh, is it a bad time that the church first of all, destroyed that bed, destroyed that bedroom, and started speaking to the government and to Kenyans specifically, so that when they wake up in the morning to go line up to vote, they are voting for someone who the church has advised to be the right person, that you've conditioned Kenyan, Kenyans to make that right decision, decision that they will not sit back and say, we wish we knew. I don't think they should destroy the bed, they should just walk out from the bedroom. Ah, nice. Understand? And lock the door. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what, I, what I would say, I would go back to Proverbs 22.6. Bring up a child in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. What Apostle Takima said, I think, has blown my mind. We should think about next generation. generation. Whereby you say you have seven years, after that there's no re-election. But that also now, unfortunately, must be an act of parliament. Mm -hmm. Now you're asking a 40-year-old MP to vote himself out in seven years. They will refuse because they're also thinking about their pockets. Now, let's go back as a church to people who are not even eligible to vote right now and start conditioning their mind to be selfless and think about generations. Mm -hmm. That when they get to a place where now they, are, they can vote, they can be in position of leadership, their mind has already been conditioned that they enter into a system and fit in seamlessly because that's all they know. Mm. But these guys who are under 60, I mean, they say it's our time to eat for another 30 years because we still need the very people to go and put an act of parliament to say, seven years and you go home. I think it will be uh, one leg on a banana peel and left leg on a slippery floor. Mm. It's gonna be a hard act to stand on that. But if we go back, because as the church, true preachers don't think about themselves. Don't think what they will eat when they go to the corridors of power. True preachers think of when on that day God asks them, what did you do? They will say, God, this is what I did beyond me. And if we can train our kids right now, 
maybe, sadly, there's what we call casualties. There's what we call occupational hazard. Mm. Uh, this generation, <coughs> even God at some point wanted to destroy the whole generation below the age of 20, saying, you know what, these ones don't understand it. Mm. So then the next generation will come understanding that, you know what, we are fitting into an economic plan, we are righteous, we are doing things for other people, we are not hungry to enrich ourselves. Mm. Reverend Massey, what is the role of the church in making sure that in 2027 or wherever it is, because we even have by elections that are due, uh, that when they get there, mm -hmm. Kenyans have listened to what the religious leaders are saying. And on that, just we will sit here and say the government has not done mm -hmm. the opposition mm -hmm. has not done this, mm -hmm. all the institutions have not done this. Mm -hmm. But what really is the role of the church? I think first of all, I'll just go back to what I said. The book of fasting, Modi, you know, exalts the church to pray. It says, let all people everywhere pray for the people in authority, that they may live a peaceable life. Because whatever they say will affect everybody. So whatever Parliament says, whatever the judiciary does, whatever um, the State House does, whatever uh, Honorable Gashagwa's office does, will affect every single person, whether a little child or an adult. It doesn't matter how much money you have. So first of all, we have a responsibility to pray and truly pray for the government and truly pray for this nation and for all of us. Number two, um, I think it's time um, the church needs to start teaching the people to prioritize themselves more than they prioritize the, the politician. Uh, think of yourself before you think of the politician. Before you pledge allegiance to the politician, think about where you yourself stand. What happens to me and my family? What happens to my children? Because when I take them to school, when I fight and I go to the streets, my child will still need school fees next week. But this politician won't bring money to my house. So the church needs to, stay, to teach the people to love and to prioritize themselves above the next politician. That way, you will be able to see the right politician for whatever you're looking for. Number four, I think it is time that we deliberately, um, we have had an issue. We've had issues of people saying, what can say, what can say, that the church people stay in church, that the politicians do the politics. But if we truly had true God fearing, true, underline the word true, God fearing people that entered our parliaments and entered our office government, of office, um, government offices, we would have a much better functional government. People who truly value, fear God, number one. You know what Apostle Takim said a few minutes ago? He said they need to know God will judge them. But if they don't fear God, they will never think God judges. After all, I've seen others get away with it. So what's the big deal? Because they don't see the bigger picture. And the Bible says spiritual things are not discerned carnally. So if we can have true Christians occupy the right offices, we are going to be getting somewhere. The problem is that when they come in, they give into the to the to the rules of the game and forget themselves. I remember um, several many years ago when I was pretty um, a young minister, I rode to to Mombasa with um, Mutava Musimi, and he sat next to me. He was a very foregoing person, and he began to engage me in a conversation. He was an MP, and I remember asking him, "So you're going to go? But you know the way they do it. Um, you come from MP, and now you want to become this, and now you want to be." He said, "I'm I'm not interested." because I have a focus and it is my people. If we have Christians that truly, or Muslims that truly care about the people, and they occupy offices, and their focus is the people, then we will do well. So I will encourage myself, the clergy seated here, and anybody out there who preaches the gospel, let's focus on raising people that can be functional in the political offices, in the government offices, to help gather. If we have one in every three or five offices, we are doing well. Yeah. Apostle Takim, uh, because you're running short of time, uh, just closing remarks in terms of, I want you to speak to the Kenyan out there, speak to your congregation, and speak to the government on the need of being righteous and leading the country right. Whether you are a Kenyan, you're running your own business, or you're the government leading the people. In two minutes, sir. Yes, um, I, let me begin with the Kenyan, because um, the, <coughs> it's the individual Kenyans that make up the entire nation. So we should really, really wake up in the area of the fear of God. And that now calls for finding churches that can teach you the fear of God. Because it's so sad that so many churches do not teach the fear of God. Mm. They teach uh, money making, they teach uh, deliverance, teach and heaven. They, they teach other things. And uh, all the teachings are geared towards making the pastor a deity 
and making him to make more money from the people. So find a church that will teach you righteousness because righteousness exalts a nation and sin is a reproach to every people. Now, and now to, the, to the government, you see, like I said earlier, you will give account. Everybody who is in government, from the president to the last person, to the clerk, you will give account of every decision that you are making. Mm -hmm. You will. The Bible said so. No, and other books also say so. It's not just the Bible. You will give account of it. And they're like, what uh, I want to add to what everybody has said, I don't really subscribe to putting Christians or Muslims in, a, in place for the government to be good. Put people of integrity. Mm. People of integrity. They could be Christians, they could be Muslims, they could be, but let them have integrity. Let them be selfless. Once you are there, things will be okay. So you, who is out there serving, you will give account. That money you are stealing, the Bible spoke about a cause that pursues the thief. That money you are stealing, you are incurring causes upon yourself. And let every one of us, every one of you who is in government, understand that. Follow the statemanship, the principle of a statesman, mm -hmm. not that of a politician. Mm -hmm. Yes. Robert Burali. Now, already, we, as we sit here, we agree there are bad leaders uh, in, in place. Uh, that will not shy from saying, what is your advice to a Kenyan and to that leader? There are no bad leaders. There are bad people elected into leadership. Thank you. You understand? So we just teach righteousness and understand there will be one day you'll give account. Mm -hmm. Every time you know you will give account, after you are done, you will walk right. Mm -hmm. Sheikh. Uh, uh, dear uh, Kenyans, uh, as we pray in these last 10 days of Ramadan, we call upon each and every Muslim in this country to pray for this great nation, for the leaders, and also for all of us. And we also call upon our uh, dear friends, uh, Christians, also to pray for us and to, uh, for the nation because it is Easter. And uh, I'm calling upon Kenyans to record each and every statement any leader make. So that in 2027, when they start their campaigns, we will start showing them what they have been telling us. And I'm calling upon uh, media houses to start calling these politicians here. And you are the ones who will be having the manifesto in your hands. Mm. And you start asking President William Samoy Ruto, manifesto number one, one item was this. Have you done it? Number two, and you do it now. Don't wait for 2027 because they'll be lying that time. Call them from now. Arrange time for all of them and then you have their manifesto in their hands asking them so that they realize that uh, whatever lies they made, then they have to make for the lies before that time. And another issue we call upon our parliamentarians and also Kenyans is to come up with an impeachment. Uh, uh, let, let us change the impeachment laws to make sure that uh, and make it very easy for Kenyans to impeach the president, the deputy president, the governors, and anyone so that we can impeach them the moment they are not working as they are doing now. Reverend Nasi. I would call on Kenyans um, to start taking responsibility of their own actions because we can talk about corruption, we can talk about everything forever, but we are all participating. So let Kenyans begin themselves. If you start with yourself, there is no change that begins out there. Change begins with you. So let Kenyans begin the change with themselves. We can't keep calling out the government and calling out the politicians when we are behaving just like them. So may we take responsibility and focus on the greater good of this nation. Mm -hmm. If we carry the nation in our hearts ourselves, we will all be all right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is uh, the Reverend Marcy Lavoshira from the Agape Lighthouse. Thank you very much for gracing the show today. And Apostle Richard Takim, the Cry of the Spirit Ministries International Santisana. And Dr. Sheikh um, Omari Santisana for being here. This is my Sheikh um, from Ikra back in the days. Santisana for being here. Happy to see you. And uh, Pastor Robert Burali, thank you very much for being here as the clergy today gives their views on where it is we are as a country, what we need to do, how we need to make these steps, telling us that each and every person shall give their account before the Almighty. When the time comes, you might play games here, but at the end of the day, we shall be accountable for all it is that we do. Whether you are a Kenyan, a politician, you are a leader, police officer, all that you do right now will be accounted for later. My name is Dennis Aseto. You can also call me Ibrahim because it is Ramadan and to the Sheikh Ramadan Karim was Um Makbul and to my Christian brothers and sisters, happy Easter holidays. Enjoy the rest of your viewing. I'm Dennis Aseto. Good morning.